Hey guys, Alan from Hack Gadgets here. Today we're going to take a look at one of these mechanical timers and see what makes it tick. Literally. Okay, so this mechanical dial, um, it's used. I just took it out a few days ago. It's actually uh, defective. You can crank the dial. The dial still works. It still counts down, but uh, this stays open contact uh, no matter what. So let's uh, take a look inside and see what makes this thing uh, work. It has lots of real easy to access uh, bits here. I think this will be a piece of cake to get into. Lots of screws and let me get that ticking to stop and on the back here what do we have um, hundred so this is in Canada so we have uh, 110 volt system here so 125 volt AC 60 Hertz which is our frequency here 15 amps resistive hmm that's weird 8 amps 1000 watt tungsten so it's funny that it uh, differentiates between resistive, 15 amps resistive, and 8 amps tungsten. See, I would have thought all day long, um, I would have said tungsten is a resistive load. Hmm, in interesting. 5 amps for a fluorescent light, and I'm not sure what the 15 FLA 90 LRA is about, and it's a CSA here. Okay, I've just taken off the first two screws on the face. It looks like this just pops right off. It's kind of weird. This is actually on a location where you would you would never actually take this off as a customer. You know, this is a a unit. Um, it has a a blue protective film on the front, and this is by the weight of it, I can tell this is aluminum. So this whole piece has this blue protective film. And so this one would have been accessible uh, if you remove this guy, which again, this doesn't have to be removed. Um, actually, no, this would be removed because this is what sticks out from the light socket when you put the cover plate on. So yeah, this would be removed. But the back, so the back would be against this. Now, you know, plastic is, uh, so I wouldn't think this would get extremely hot, but you know, obviously you don't want plastic touching and possibly getting warm and melting and oozing and all that sort of stuff. So I'm really surprised in the factory they wouldn't have removed this back piece before they bolted this on here. Just kind of strange. Anyway, okay, so what do we have in here? So this is actually loose. So this looks to be the mechanical portion. So this is actually also screwed together. Very nice, it's not just crimped. And uh, so this is sort of a metal a metal surround here. And it looks to be some sort of plastic on the sides. I know this is metal here. Maybe this is just shiny metal. And let's see what happens with this little tong at the back when I spin this. So it looks like that thing moves out of the way. So it's ticking right now, it's engaged, and I'll disengage it. So I think that lever is basically the activation switch. I think that's as simple as it is. So that looks like it's working, so I don't think that's defective. And nothing feels loose in here. Okay, and here's the back piece. I see there's a little switch here, and this feels really sloppy. So I'm assuming that all is back here, so this is the wires that, that pop in here. And, okay, this little piece fell out. A little tiny nub of white plastic. And, okay, so I'm thinking, actually, I can see right here, there's a little hole here, and that's probably... A pivot point for this piece and I bet you that little nub of plastic is what wore off 
That seems very, very small. Um, so I'm thinking all this is is a micro switch in here. And this little tiny pin just basically pushes on a on a on a plastic lever which presses a micro switch. But let's uh, take off the screws on the back and see how it works. Okay, screws are out. Let's see if I can grab something here. Okay, so that does come out. And this piece lifts out. And oops. Yeah, so I think I think I am right. There is a little tab on this one side here. And you can see where there really wants to be a tab on the other side. There's the micro switch, which just basically has its wires poking out here. And they've actually gone to a lot of effort here. They put some heat shrink tubing on here, or maybe this is just part of the uh, the fixture they have. But really, it's not necessary. Um, I wouldn't think because you know, well, this isn't insulated up here, this portion, and this is behind this little plastic shroud so this never gets in contact with anything but uh, and it looks like this thing is actually just pushed in here it's not screwed in there's just little um, little tabs here where that pushes in which is fine because this thing is actually um, sandwiched in here and this piece is screwed in you can see the, uh, the, the three screws that come through there so yeah this thing is isolated well and uh, and in there nicely Let's see if we can see the brand name on that. Looks to be S A J A A U R G E S S. Never heard of that brand before. Yeah, who knows? Might be a really popular switch company. Let's see if that switch works. So these leads just go over to a meter in continuity mode. I'm just going to press the micro switch. Easier said than done. There it goes. Working like a champ. So what caused this switch to go bad? This little tiny piece of plastic broke off of there. That's actually quite a ridiculous fail. So since this is such a trivial failure and it has nothing to do with the actual electrical portion of it, um, if it was something electrical I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, do any modifications to it because then that would of course, uh, um, you know, could be dangerous. But uh, this little tab here, and my batteries are dying on this thing, but it says uh, 1.85 millimeters. So I have this finishing nail. This finishing nail is about 1.35 millimeters, so fairly close, just a little bit smaller. I think I'm just going to modify this so that the pivot point is now metal and it'll be on both sides here again. So, take me about a minute and a half or so and we'll see if it works. Okay, so what I did first of all is I chopped a solid piece, so it's not going to be too little divots this is going to actually going to run the length of it and I've taken a soldering iron and I've notched a notch right down the center here and so that's basically in line with where the previous one was and so this is going to be placed in here so it overlaps exactly like those those two different pins did and I'm going to hot glue this in place. Here's the modified piece. So that steel rod now is coming through there in exactly the same position as the other ones. And there's no real um, restriction on here is for depth. So um, I had channeled this out with a soldering iron, placed that in, 
and hot glued it in place and it was still just a little bit because hot glue is a bit compliant um, so where that what I ended up doing is uh, <laughs> this is just a um, end of a ballpoint pen cap and it just adds a lot of rigidity to it and so now this this pin is it's solid in there it's not moving at all um, I would have used some epoxy if I had some I, I don't have any epoxy on the go here so I think this hot glue will work just fine let's give it a try okay first step is going to be dropping oops, dropping this piece inside there um, let me see so this piece is the one that sticks out so we want to get it in that little bottom piece, like so. And then this top piece will have to be aligned. With a little notch. There we go. Okay, I've hooked up the meter again. I'm just going to hold this in place temporarily without the screws. And I'm going to give it a push to see if it activates the switch. Beautiful. And there's there's literally zero resistance on here. It's just so easy to push. So that'll be no problem for that little uh, that little repair to hold. Okay, bottom piece is screwed back in. Just gonna drop the top back in now. And so as this turns, this little piece moves this way. So this will have to get in behind in this little pocket in here so when it moves it pushes it in this direction here. So let me see if I can do that. Well it should just drop into place into that little hole I'm thinking. Okay so it dropped in there. I actually had to tilt it this way so the uh, the little mechanism would, would fall out of place and then this thing just pushed right in. And now you turn it on it goes, counts down, and eventually it will turn off. Good as new. Okay, so here it is sealed back up in its little protective housing here. All, um, what is it, five screws are back in place. One last test. Wonderful. Works like a charm. For more information, go to hackedgadgets.com.